intro. A pleasant day to everyone. My name is Arison Rodrigo, and in this video, I will be talking about chapters 1.2 and 1.3. So chapter 1.2 is all about the classifications of marine environments and marine organisms. The world's ocean can be subdivided into a number of marine environments. The most basic division separates the pelagic and benthic realms. So let us first discuss the pelagic environment. The pelagic environment, pelagic meaning open sea, is that of the water column from the surface to the greatest depths. It is also sometimes defined as the part of the open sea or ocean that is not near the coast or sea floor. Another basic division separates the vast open ocean, the oceanic zone and the inshore neuritic zone. This division is based on depth and distance from land and the separation is conventionally made at the 200 meters depth limit which generally marks the edge of the continental shelf. The neuritic zone is the region of shallow water about 200 meters depth above the continental shelf where life penetrates to the seafloor. The oceanic zone is the entire rest of the ocean from the bottom edge of the neuritic zone where sunlight does not reach the bottom. You can see the two zones at the upper horizontal part of the illustration. The pelagic zone, also known as the open ocean zone, is further divided into a number of subzones, based on their different ecological characteristics, which is roughly a function of depth. The first one is epipelagic, from the surface down to around 200 meters. The illuminated surface zone, where there is enough light for photosynthesis, and thus, plants and animals are largely concentrated in this zone. Here, one will typically encounter fish, fish such as tuna and many sharks. The next one is mesopelagic, from 200 meters down to around 1,000 meters. It is also known as the twilight zone. Although some light penetrates this deep, it is insufficient for photosynthesis. The third one is bathypelagic from 1,000 meters to around 4,000 meters. By this depth, the ocean is almost entirely dark, with only the occasional bioluminescent organism. There are no living plants, and most animals survive by consuming the snow of detritus falling from the zones above, or like the marine hatchet fish, by preying upon others. Giant squid live at this depth, and here they are hunted by big sperm whales. The next one is abyssopelagic, from 4,000 meters down to above the ocean floor. No light whatsoever penetrates to this depth, and most creatures are blind and colorless. The last one is haddalpelagic, the deep water in ocean trenches. The name is derived from Hades, the classical Greek underworld. This zone is 90% unknown and very few species are known to live here. Now, we will be talking about the benthic environment. The benthic environment, benthic meaning bottom, encompasses this seafloor and includes such areas as shores, littoral or intertidal areas, coral reefs, and the deep seabed. The benthic zone is subdivided into different zones, namely intertidal or littoral zone, supralittoral zone, sublittoral zone, bathial zone, abyssal zone, and hadal zone. So, the first one is supralittoral zone, the beach or shore above high tide lines influenced by ocean activities. The next one is intertidal or littoral zone, the region of high tide mark to low tide mark. The next one is sublittoral zone, away from land that is low tide mark to edge of the continental shelf. The next one is bathial zone, where slopes and rises of the ocean floor. Depth is 1,000 meters to 4,000 meters. It is also known as midnight zone because of the lack of light. So the next one is abyssal zone. The abyssal zone is one of the many benthic zones we have highlighted to describe the deep oceans. 
This is the region of ocean floor plains. And lastly, the Hadal Zone. The Hadal Zone, separated from the Bathyal by the even darker Abyssal Zone, starts at the ocean floor. This is the region of deep trenches in ocean. So in this illustration, you can see the benthic zone on the left side of the picture, while on the right side, you will notice the pelagic zone. Living things in the oceans are called marine organisms. They range from tiny bacteria to the largest known animal, which is the blue whale. All are adapted for life in salt water. Most are adapted for extreme pressures. So when you think of life in the ocean, do you think of fish? Actually, fish are not the most common life forms in the ocean. Plankton are the most common. Plankton make up one of the three major groups of marine life. The other two groups are nekton and benthos. So the first group are plankton. Plankton are living things that float in the water. Most plankton are too small to see with the unaided eye. Plankton are unable to move on their own, so ocean motions carry them along. So there are two main types of plankton. The first one is phytoplankton or plant-like plankton. They make food by photosynthesis. They live in the photic zone and most of them are algae. The second one is zooplankton or animal-like plankton. They feed on phytoplankton and they include tiny anima animals and fish larvae. So here are some examples of planktons. The second group are nekton. Nekton are living things that swim through the water. They may live at any depth in the photic or aphotic zone. Most nekton are fish, although some are mammals. Fish have fins and streamlined bodies to help them swim. Fish also have gills to take oxygen from the water. Here are some examples of nekton. So the last group are benthos. Benthos are living things on the ocean floor. Many benthic organisms attach themselves to rock and stay in one place. This protects them from crashing waves and other water movements. Some benthic organisms burrow into sediments for food or protection. Benthic animals may crawl over the ocean floor. Examples of benthos include clams and worms. Here are some examples of benthos. At this point, let us now move on to chapter 1.3, which is all about the basic ecological terms and concepts. Basic ecological concepts are central to many studies of biological oceanography, and certain ecological terms will be used throughout this text. Marine organisms can be considered either individually or, com or, or more commonly in ecological studies on different collective levels. So a species is defined as a separate group of interbreeding individuals that are reproductively isolated from other groups of their kind. A population is a collection of individuals of a, speci of a single species living in a certain location. Population density is the number of individuals per unit area or per unit volume of water. An ecological community is made up of the numerous populations of microorganisms, plants, and animals that live in the same physical space. An organism habitat is the place where it lives, but the phrase can also apply to the area populated by a whole community. The environment is made up of both non-living abiotic components like as temperature and nutrient concentrations as well as biotic components such as other creatures and species. The ecosystem is the greatest degree of ecological integration, including one or many communities over a vast geographic region and include the abiotic environment in which the creatures exist. Species diversity is frequently used to indicate the simplicity or complexity of communities and ecosystems. It may be defined in a variety of ways but the term is used throughout this book to refer the total number of species. This is the last part of my presentation, and I would like to thank each and everyone for listening.